Hey everyone, welcome to Easy Nursing, the channel that's dedicated to bringing you NCLEX reviews, general nursing tips, and practice question videos. Today we're going to be doing practice questions about dialysis, chronic kidney disease, and end stage renal disease. So real quick, chronic kidney disease, this is kidney disease uh, that is chronic, greater than six months. Uh, it's going to be for the rest of the patient's life. Stage four and stage five is typically end stage renal disease in which the kidneys have very, very little to no uh, function. So let's do NCLEX practice question. So which of the following is correct regarding hemodialysis? So we see hemo, this is gonna be dialysis, dialysis of the blood. Okay, so which of the following is true? It allows the patient to eat whatever they want. Well, as you know about patients with a renal diet and chronic kidney disease, they have to really watch their phosphorus, magnesium, and potassium because these are typically excreted by the kidneys. So uh, hemodialysis does help excrete those electrolytes. Um, and also these patients typically are on a fluid uh, restriction because they can't, their, uh, their kidneys won't push the excess volume out. Um, but that does not allow them to eat whatever they want. So this would be incorrect. What happens is the patient's got several days between dialysis, typically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. If they were to eat nothing but or drink nothing but orange juice, the potassium in the fluid, gallon after gallon after gallon, they're still going to go into fluid overload and have high potassium, possibly have a heart attack before they even get to their next dialysis treatment. It restores fluid and electrolyte balance. Well, let's see, that looks correct. It does restore fluids uh, and electrolyte balance. Well, let's just look at the others while we're here. It cures the kidney damage. This is not the case. It doesn't do anything really to the kidneys. It just filters the blood. So it does not cure kidney damage. Chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal disease are incurable. The only other treatment would be like a kidney transplant, but that doesn't cure the damaged kidney. All patients must continue hemodialysis for life once they begin. Look at this word all. You'll see this a lot with NCLEX questions. When you see all or all patients, well, guess what? Every patient's different. So this is a red flag. All patients must continue hemodialysis for life once they begin. Well, I just told you some patients uh, could be on dialysis until they get a kidney transplant. Or some patients may be on dialysis until they decide they don't want to be on dialysis anymore and they are a hospice patient and so that could be for a week before they pass away so all patients is going to be incorrect so for this one here we see b as the correct answer let's do the next question so a nurse is educating a student on assessing a patient's hemodialysis fistula so remember, this is dialysis of the blood and a fistula. This is found in the patient's arm um, or leg. And we'll take a picture in just a second prior to treatment. So we're assessing their access side. Which of the following would be correct statement? So we're looking for a positive, which is correct. All right. So let me uh, real quick show you all a picture of what we're talking about here. So this is a picture of a uh, dialysis uh, fistula or graft. If Typically, you'll see this is this is what you could tell is a fistula because it's the vein is swollen. So what happens is they take an artery and they attach it to this vein. So what happens is it makes this vein blow up really big because veins are low pressure and arteries are high pressure. So the high pressure blows the vein up real big so they can get lots and lots and lots of blood out and put blood really, really quick back into the patient. That's how they can do the dialysis treatment. So. Um, if this was a graph, you could see more of just like a loop, um, but this is what we're looking at. So when we're talking about, uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, the question here. So it says you can hear a thrill with your stethoscope. So you hear the word brewing thrill a lot when you're talking about dialysis sites. Um, now this is going to be incorrect because a thrill is what you feel. You feel a thrill. And so what this is, is when you, uh, let's show you that picture. When you put your hand uh, and put it right over the access site, you're going to feel blood. You can feel the vibration of the blood running through. That's the thrill. You feel the thrill. The brewy uh, is going to be something you hear. So what this question was trying to get us to kind of trick us here, you don't hear a thrill. You hear a brewy with a stethoscope. 
so to get a brewery, you take your stethoscope and you put it over the same spot where you feel and you'll be hearing blood rushing through. So let's look at the next one. We must check the patient's blood pressure twice, once on each arm. So it didn't tell us where their access side is. Um, I think this is trying to trick us into telling us to do their blood pressure on the arm with the dialysis site. So there's two things that are red flags here. One, there's no need to check the blood pressure twice, one on each arm, unless you have a critical high or a critical low, but they didn't give us that in the question. The other is, if the patient's fistula, which nine times out of 10, or more, like, more than that, the fistula is gonna be on the patient's arm. So you don't wanna check any blood pressures on the arm that has the fistula. So what is this? You should be able to feel vibrations from the blood rushing through the fistula. That is called a thrill. You feel a thrill. So that is gonna be correct. And D, we need to apply a tourniquet first. There's no need to apply a tourniquet. And like I told you, no blood pressures on the dialysis arm, no tourniquets, um, no tight clothing, nothing like that. So you see a tourniquet and we're talking about dialysis, that's a red flag. So for this one, the correct answer is going to be C. All right, let's do one more. Which of the following is an expected lab finding for a patient with stage four chronic kidney disease? All right, so let's think about labs and chronic kidney disease. So let's take a look. A BUN of 250, creatinine of 1.0, potassium of 4.9, or hemoglobin 14.0. Well, let's take a look at what the normal labs are and see wh which of these is off. So looking here, creatinine, this is a measure of for kidney function, renal function, and it should be between 0.7 and 1.4. We can see that a 1.0 is within normal limits. Someone with chronic kidney disease is not going to be within normal limits. Their creatinine is going to be 40, 50. It's going to be, it's going to be much more than one. All right, potassium is typically 3.5 to about 5.0 or 5.1. So this potassium is in normal limits. This is not expected for chronic kidney disease. You would expect them to have a very high potassium of up to six, dangerously up to seven. Potassium puts them at risk for having cardiac um, events. So potassium is very important in these dialysis patients. So they would have a high potassium. Hemoglobin of 14.0. You can see that is going to be within normal limits for uh, an adult. And this is going to be not expected because the kidneys re release erythropoietin, which tells the body, hey, let's produce red blood cells. Um, so it's unable to do that. So these patients typically have chronic anemia due to their chronic kidney disease. A BUN of 250, look at that, a high BUN, this is another measure, this is a waste product in the blood. This is gonna be the correct answer for this question because with someone with chronic kidney disease, you'll expect a very high BUN, a high creatinine, a high potassium, and a low hemoglobin. All right, there we are. All right, everyone, that is easy nursing. So uh, I'm Chase, I make these videos regularly for you. If you have any questions, comment below. Um, also, you can like and subscribe to Easy Nursing. Thanks.